Hello and welcome to the Story Behind the Stories, your weekly look at the pages of the Nipawa Banner and Press. Thank you very much for taking a little bit of your time and spending it here with us, right on NAC TV. I'm Owen Devereaux, news reporter with the Banner and Press, welcoming you once again to the show, joined this week by Ken Waddell, publisher, owner, operator, and reporter this week for the <laughs> Nipawa Banner and Press. We got, you, we got you doing some honest work this week, Ken, oh, you know. can't slough off forever, eh? Oh, and you caught me. <laughs> and you were very much uh, Johnny on the spot, as it were. Yourself and Christine Riddell, Waddell. Johnny and, and Jane on the spot, I suppose. Yeah. In regards to our front page story, and boy, is it an interesting one. If you didn't see it online, if you didn't see it on our website, mywestman.ca, that's why you need to pick up a copy of the Banner and Press and find out a little bit. A manhunt in downtown Nipawa, a thrilling, exciting sort of circumstance that came out of nowhere during the long weekend. And Ken and Chris, you, uh, you were both essentially on the scene as it happened. Yeah, we, we got a text because we were down at the park and uh, somebody who left the park just ahead of us said, text it back, well, watch out, there's a big police presence downtown. So we came up and of course there was police on, on um, Hamilton, there was police on Isabel, and so we went by that, saw on Isabel there was an arrest being made, a, a woman was being arrested, thought, well, that's not the place to draw into and start asking questions right this minute. <laughs> and so we kept on going to the highway and pulled along, had to stop at the stop sign. Well, lo and behold, at the stop sign, not paying any attention to us, fortunately, was an RCMP officer with his rifle at hand and uh, pointed kind of in the general direction of the uh, mountain north or the medical clinic whatever yep. and uh, so we just let's just keep on going take a picture as we go uh, turns out as you you've done the report on it all but they there was a couple driving from Ontario allegedly um, guy was wanted on some charges in Ontario and um, the police spotted it his vehicle and tried to make him stop didn't stop, put out a spike belt, disabled the car, limped into Nipawa, and they start, he started running away. They found the, the lady, arrested her, uh, who may have been um, in some danger herself, according to the reports. And, um, but the guy got away. Mm -hmm. He snuck out of town somehow, and they arrested him the next day in Brandon. That's the most interesting thing. You can find out all those details and more in the story, which you can find on the front page of this week's edition of the Banner and Press. That's the intriguing thing. We, do, we shared with you as many of the details as we were able to get before we went to print. But there's still one or two details that I find just a little curious on. One of those, as you said, Ken, how did this gentleman, how did this individual, I use the term gentleman perhaps loosely, how did this individual end up in Brandon from Nipawa. I mean, I get winded just walking from the Safeway home, yeah. let alone, let, you know, Brandon's a little bit uh, a little bit further down the way. Yeah, I, I think we want to follow that up and say, well, how did this happen? And the other thing that's interesting, especially with all the talk right now, and even yet today, about you know Facebook and not being available to newspapers and stuff. We're still on Facebook, by the way, so far. But um, the thing is that... Uh, uh, you know, Facebook lit up with, oh, there's a, and the rumor mill, there was a man running around Nipawa brandishing a gun. Well, no, the un only guns that were being brandished were by the RCMP. Um, and then there was a few other details. We're still trying to find out about closures because uh, haven't, people haven't got back to us on that. But it's, uh, that you sometimes wonder, people might wonder, well, you know, why aren't you on this sooner? Well, we're very, very careful to make sure that we only publish either what we've seen, been told first hand, or gotten from the RCMP. Because the, the, the rumor mail can be really off base, and it was really off base a few times on that issue. And again, that's one of those things of if you tune into the show on a consistent basis, this is where we can talk about these types of things, the story behind the story, where we're not able to share all of those details. This is the information we can't confirm and we didn't put it in print because when it's in print, it's, it's permanent and it's, it's something that you've got to stick your name on and stick with. This here, again, we can say it's, it was rumor. They talked about a lockdown at the hospital. We've heard people 
talk to us conversationally, say, oh yeah, they, they close things down. But then we've had other people say, no, that's not the case. There was no official lockdown at the hospital. So again, we've got that conflict where we don't know which side is which on this. And we're trying to chase it down and learn a little bit more about that. And, and right now, even as we sit here, I'm still waiting for a call from the contact the hospital gave me and they haven't got back to me. I don't know if they're in holidays or busy or... They're in <laughs> lockdown. They can't, they can't call out. I mean, whatever. <laughs> uh, I mean, I just want to know, was it, how, was it a lockdown? The police weren't aware of it. At least the police yep. spokesman, I'll qualify that. The police spokesman who talked to us was not aware of a lockdown of the hospital. But several people have said, oh, yes, there was a lockdown of the hospital. We couldn't get in. And again, we've heard as well about uh, maybe they went over to the new hospital location where the construction was going on, or maybe the perpetrator was over in that area. And maybe that's the confusion as well, as people were heard about the hospital area, maybe they think the existing hospital. Once again, we don't know. That's why it's not in the story, because we cannot confirm 100%. But everything we do have in the story, we can confirm 100%. That's why we put our name on it. That's why I put my name on it. And again, Ken, Chris, you are a big part of this as well. So even though I get the byline, you, you guys are, are throughout this story as well because you yeah. were on the scene and you were able to get it. It was very uh, surreal because it was so, well, it's a good thing. It was calm and quiet and I don't think there was any shots fired or anything like that. But as far as, again, going back to the lockdown, we have reliable people who have talked to us on Facebook and said, yes, there definitely were locked down at the hospital. We're still trying to track that down yeah. from official sources. And again, the most interesting thing about this as well is why you need to pick up a copy of the Banner and Press or check it out each and every week on mywestman.ca because I talk to friends uh, in uh, Winnipeg, I talk to uh, friends and family in Brandon, and for the most part they go, what happened? What was going on in Nipawa? You're kidding. They have no idea what happened. They have no idea there was a manhunt in Nipawa over the weekend. And um, that's, the, that's the thing. That's why you need to pick up a copy of the paper or you need to check it out consistently online. Because let's be honest, Winnipeg doesn't pay that much attention to anything outside of Winnipeg. And Brandon, as much as I enjoy the city, I lived there for about 15 years, love the community. Brandon's getting the same way. They get that case of perimeter-itis, so they don't know what's going on outside. And, and again, if you don't want to, that's your prerogative. But if you want to be informed, that's why you need to pick up the banner and press. Yeah, see, Ken, I'm doing really a hard sell mode right now yeah, for you. I'm going to put you on ad sales pretty soon. Oh, jeez. <laughs> anyway. But again, if you want to find out all the details, you can pick it up, find out. It was very interesting weekend, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> to say the least. But, you know, for the most part, rural Manitoba is not usually this... It's exciting, but it's usually exciting in a whole different way. And that's a part of your most recent editorial, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it's interesting. Cause we d took a big trip last year, and Christine, when she got home, she says, well, look at all the stuff in Nepo I missed while we were away. <laughs> and uh, so we're going out to lots of events this year. And I just write it, writing about that, you know, there's been cattle shows and fairs like uh, over on the, to the west of us a little bit, you know, the so-called milk run, well not so-called, that's what they do call the fair circuit there, six fairs in six days in six small towns. Um, you know, the beef roundup was here, uh, we're going out this weekend to uh, uh, a big fundraising breakfast at Kelwood, we're going to Alonza, because they're having their 100th anniversary. Mm -hmm. and uh, well, I'm going to be out in St. Rose because of the unveiling of the refurbished grotto out well, there. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot yep. right on the Turtle River there. Uh, the um, uh, Gladstone Fair, you know, I mean, it's just endless, the amount of stuff, the amount of volunteer hours it takes to put all this stuff on. Even that, coming into town as well, the Rolling Barrage is going to be here yes. on Sunday as well. Yeah. In Nipawa. Yeah. Tremend tremendous amount of stuff. So my column basically says, not a lot to complain about in rural Manitoba, although some weeks I can find a few things to complain about. <laughs> and um, people would be disappointed if I didn't. And, but there's so much to do, so many wonderful things to do. And unfortunately, the incident on the weekend with the guy being arrested, we don't have that very often in rural Manitoba, and we're thankful for that. Yep. And again, I mean, 
there are times where we sort of take community living, rural living, a little bit for granted. A couple of weeks ago, I had some good friends of mine. I've known them, God, going on 30 years right now. And they actually came out to uh, Nipawa for the weekend. And one of them lives in Winnipeg. The other one lives in Brandon. And they said it just felt different. It felt sort of whatever weight you want to talk about of city living just felt like it was a way. And, and that's maybe we're a little spoiled by that. And, and uh, hopefully it's something that we can continue to have as we move forward in this nice little community of ours. Or if you're not in Nipawa, other communities such as Minidosa, Gladstone, St. Rose, Plumas, they all have that little sort of their own little special something. And um, let's not take that for granted. Yeah, that's for sure. And the, uh, I, I like, uh, I could give many examples, but I've known some people very well over the years, you know, and they, they couldn't wait to get to Winnipeg. And now, as they've been there 10 years or 20 years or whatever, and some of them have moved back to the rural, they think, why did I ever want to go there for? And I'm not knocking Winnipeg. It has its advantages, and there's lots of people live there, and they're happy there. But there's a certain, there is a difference, as you were talking about. There is a difference. Winnipeg to Brandon, there's a difference. Brandon to Nipawa, there's a difference. And it, some people figure that Nipawa is too busy now. They'd rather live in a smaller center yet. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's great. It's great that we have the opportunity to do that. If you want to find out a little bit more, check in on Ken's column. You can always find it on page four of the Banner and Press. All right. We touched on this to a degree in Ken's column here about so many different activities that are on the go and so many interesting things that uh, we're going to be able to do in the weeks ahead. And we've got three pages of special features that showcase that this week. If you go into the center of the paper, Center Spreads essentially talks about Minidosa Fun Fest. They've got that event that's going to be coming on. It's not this weekend. It's going to be happening next weekend. I'll be there to get pictures of the whole thing and very much looking forward to it. Uh, and as well, next weekend, we've also got uh, Harvest Sun Music Festival and the uh, Kelwood Agricultural Fair. Yeah. I mean, this time of the year, August is always so huge for these types of community activities, isn't it, Ken? Yeah, and I think there's a reason for it. There, a lot of them originally were agricultural based, so you know the harvest is starting to come on now early a bit for this uh, for the season. But a lot of these events are coming. You know, there's so so. Pardon me a celebration just ahead of the harvest. And so uh, that's why they kind of bunched together. But you know, some great events coming up and, and uh, the ads are in this week's paper and there'll be reports on it in the following weeks as well. And again, we most appreciate uh, being able to reach out to those communities. And again, sponsors and advertisers seeing the value of the banner and press and advertising those events with us. Even though we are the Nipawa banner and press we always like to consider ourselves a regional paper more than just a singular community and we don't always achieve that i mean we are still a small town paper with only a few bodies and only so much time in the day so that's why we always appreciate when you reach out to us and share some information with us share some details or even pictures uh, we try to get out to as many different things as we can but we can't always so when you step up and help us out in that way you share with us and we share with you. It's always very much appreciated. Well, Nepal has become a regional center. Uh, we also forgot to mention Gladstone Fair is coming up right away too. Yeah. Um, but um, the Nepal banner and press cover an area that had many newspapers. You know, there used to be one at Carberry. There used to be two at Gladstone. There was one at Plumas. There was one at McCreary. There was one at St. Rose. Um, so four, five, six papers that are no longer there. Oh, that's a long time since some of those papers were there. I get that. But it's not that long ago for some of them either. And um, so we are shouldering that, but we've only got so many people and so many ads, so we can't get to everything. So once we have information and pictures are submitted to us, we appreciate that too, for sure. That's right. And you bring up the Gladstone Fair as well. We did have that special feature in last week's edition of the Nipawa Banner and Press. If you picked up a copy of the paper, you're able to see the full schedule on that. And I'm actually going to be out there myself 
to get pictures of all the different festivities, the parades, the events, everything that's going on. And of course, they're going to be having the sort of official uh, unveiling of the new pool out there. I haven't seen it myself. I haven't even sort of seen recently sort of the most recent pictures of it. So I'm very much kind of looking forward to seeing what they were able to do out there. And I had explained to you this morning what a coke dive was, so I'm, <laughs> su I'm sure you're going to participate now. For people who don't know what a coke dive is, they throw a bunch of bo uh, bo not bottles, cans of coke into the pool, and then people dive down to get them. And Owen wants at least one. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm a Pepsi person. Maybe oh, that's okay. the reason. <laughs> but again, there's so much fun activities that are going to be going on at Gladstone this weekend. So if you are out and about, head on over to Gladstone or head on over to Alonza. As Ken said, they're going to be checking that out. The unveiling, the sort of commemoration of the Grotto in St. Rose. It sounds like that's going to be a lot of fun. It's just so much on the go. That's why you need to pick up a copy of the Banner and Press to keep you in the loop. All right, now this one I'm very appreciative of because I'm not able to focus on sports as much as I was in previous years. So when you reach out to me and you give us some news tips on certain things, it is appreciated. I try and get as many of them as I can. And this one, uh, very appreciative because it was about, about seven athletes from Nipawan surrounding areas, Langruth and whatnot, uh, who represented Team Manitoba at the dual provincial track and field meet, which was recently held in Regina. Essentially, it's a collection of uh, track and field athletes from all over, and they're representing the province. It used to be the tri-meet because it was Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, but Alberta stepped away for several years. They will be returning, actually, next year. I believe uh, next year's events will be taking place in Winnipeg, and it'll be, once again, three different uh, provinces competing against one another. So that's really going to amp up the level of competition. But having said that, even though it was just the dual meet this year, it was still very good competition. And I'm very appreciative that we were able to get a bunch of pictures from that. Uh, they were sent in by uh, Paul uh, Kossel, and, uh, who is one of the coaches for the uh, team. And uh, he came in and was able to share with me a couple quotes on this. And um, I always like being able to share these types of details, these types of information. Even if you're not into sports, even if you're not a big sports person, it's always nice to be able to support people in their local endeavors, whether it be art, music, or sports. So we like to be able to showcase those individuals, and I'm very glad I was able to do that in this case. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about the results, you can though, because you can find it on page, oh, it's a 16 pager today, so it's page 10 of this week's edition. So, uh, again, uh, just, I always appreciate when uh, somebody sends in some submissions. We've, we've got a few uh, suggestions for stories that I haven't had time to chase down yet, and if you're watching and wondering, hey, what about so-and-so? I'm sorry, it's on the list, it's a big list, it's on multiple pages right now, but we're going to get through the list as quickly as we can. All right. You, missed, you missed the story, number three. What's that? You missed number three. Oh, you're right, Ken. I'm kicked into high gear and getting just, into just the sports going, stuff. Just going, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's focus on this one again. And the reason Ken wants to focus on it, because again, Ken wrote it. And he's got a lot of words. There's a whole <laughs> bunch of words in this one. Well, I can't take credit for a lot of the words because a lot of this was submitted by Pastor Dan Dragon from Calvary Church, now formerly Calvary Church, because it's going to be renamed Valley Life Family Worship Center. And we have a picture there of the, of the church. Um, I'm told that it was originally a Masonic, or at one time was a Masonic building, mm -hmm. but it's been service, serving as Calvary Church for many, many years. And it is a kind of a pretty old building, but the decision has been made. They're going to tear it down and they're going to rebuild. They're going to go with 9,000 square feet, kind of a community center, a gymnasium, youth center, mm -hmm. church, the whole nine yards. And they're going to have, um, what day are they going to have that? I wrote it. They're going to have the, uh, the special announcement 
and kind of a kickoff for it real soon. You can read about it in the paper. I can't remember the date myself now. That's right. You can find it on page two of this week's edition of the Banner and Press. It takes up the entirety of the page with the picture and the background. And it's interesting to see. Um, like I said, we love being able to be a regional paper. So being able to reach out to Minidosa in this way and share a significant, important story like this is something we're very grateful for. And it, it sounds like it's going to be something really wonderful for the community. I, I think so. Pastor Dragon is very, very uh, high on it, and his congregation is as well. And um, So they're going to uh, do this kickoff, and they'll be doing some fundraising or whatever. But they feel, and I think they're probably gauging the community reasonably accurately, they, they need a gymnasium for youth activities. And uh, so they're going to go try and go ahead with this project. So good on them for doing it. it it's what they're going to have to find another place to hold their church services in between because when they do make the decision to go the old building is going to be taken down hopefully some of the brick can be salvaged they're planning to salvage furnishings and the yeah pardon me the big old stained glass windows and things like that but again that that is the unfortunate circumstance behind this is that the building itself which you can see in the picture that go corresponds with this story is going to be torn down now it depends on what side of the fence you are there are some people that say you most definitely have to keep the history alive it's something that you should keep preserved and others say that uh, the land is more important and we need to renovate and, and bring it to the to the here and now and both arguments have validity most definitely well, well let me ask you and, and again this has nothing to do with the story this is just your opinion ken um, what do you think about that? Uh, do, do you think retrofit or start from scratch? Well, I know that it's been debated. We've lost some buildings here in Nipawa that people wished had been retrofitted, uh, and some have been knocked down. A church very much like this stood on the site of the uh, uh, in Nipawa United Anglican uh, Church that we have here in Nipawa now. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they went to tear it down, we actually were living right across the street. We were sad to see it go. It was a nice old church and everything. But, you know, when they touched the high hole to the roof, this kind of touched it. It kind of shuddered. Mm -hmm. And one more push, and the whole roof just came down. Mm. It would, and, and the dust and dirt and everything else, that roof wasn't that safe. No. And um, this roof may be fine. Uh, the whole building may be fine. But I know they've got some issues with the building. Heating's a problem, ventilation's a problem, cooling's a problem, and it's right in the middle of the lot. They can't do anything with that land. Yep. I don't know where you would add on to a building like this to do what they're doing. It would be difficult with the available space. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it's going to be a shame to see it go, and maybe it won't. If people say no, maybe it won't go, but that's the plan right now. So. Yeah, most definitely. And if you want to keep in touch on this story, keep picking up editions of the Banner and Press, because we will be following through on this Right from uh, right until uh, right until the official ribbon cutting, I suppose. That's right. When it's all said and done. Yeah, you betcha. All right. Now, now we're gonna get back over. I got I jumped the gun just a little bit. Uh, it was our second most notable story in the edition of the Banner and Press, and I almost skipped over it, but but Ken saved the day there. Now we're gonna get back to our regular scheduled sports update. And recently we had the Nipawa Golf and Country Club held their Senior Ladies Championship. It's an event held every year, similar to the Senior Men's, of course. And coming up shortly will be the Club Championship. That is the big one. And um, in regard to the Senior Ladies this year, I have to give congratulations to Danielle Bell, who came through and was able to win the whole thing. She shot an 80 on the day, five shots clear of her nearest competitor. So congratulations to her if that's something you're interested in learning a little bit more about. I've got the championship flight and the second and third flight winners. All of them are listed in the paper. You can find it on the second sports page of this week's edition of the Banner and Press, along with a story on the Plumas Pirates. We're going to have a major update on the Plumas Pirates. Congratulations to them on winning the Santa Clara Baseball League Championship. They won it on uh, Wednesday night, defeating Minidosa. They, unfortunately, won it just after our publication deadline. So that's unfortunate. So we're going to have to share the story proper with you 
a week from now, but you can find out how they got to this point in this week's edition of the paper. Should so, pass a law that they can't have events Wednesday night. Yeah. It's too late for the paper. <laughs> got to hold off. Got to do them Tuesday night. Well, then unfortunately, you know, it's just, then something else will pop up. It'll be like, all right, Tuesdays now is no good. We'll do, we'll do everything Thursdays just to mess with us. <laughs> oh, well. All right, before we wrap things up, let's touch on the Nipawa Titans. If you picked up last week's edition of the paper, we talked about their annual general meeting, and we talked about a lot of the off-ice things that they are dealing with, that they are looking after, that they are, are uh, emphasizing. This week's newspaper story focuses on what's going on on the ice. Specifically, had a chance to speak with general manager and head coach Ken Pearson about the players that are coming back, how they're going to reduce the number of players coming in. They want to be very specific on the uh, number of players they come in. They have a good roster. They have a good core. They feel that they can win with this upcoming year. And uh, they're very optimistic about the way things can play out. Specifically, Ken talks about the goaltending unit, a uh, pair of players coming in that he's feeling very optimistic about. He also elaborates a little bit on the situation potentially with Briley Wood, who was a huge addition to the team last year. Came in a couple months into the season from the Western Hockey League, and after our season concluded, went back to the Western Hockey League and played many games with the Winnipeg Ice through their playoff run and then got an invite to the Colorado Avalanche Prospects Camp. It's wonderful that he's been able to get these opportunities, but we're not 100% sure right now what's going to come of them. Pearson says, though, they will welcome Briley back with open arms, but if he gets an opportunity somewhere else, they wish him well on that. And that's what the team in the league is all about, is taking those potential prospects and making sure they're able to move on to the next level. But overall, Ken, he seemed very optimistic about what they could do, potentially, in the Western Division. Well, Ken's been you know, working away. This is going to be his fifth year here. And um, this team is definitely a team that he has built and put together. And that's what he was hired to do. And that's his aim in life. And so hopefully it'll all, all come together and work well. I know the board is working very well. We've got extra board members who have just come on. And... Um, so hopefully it'll all work together. The, the, the sponsorship has been good for the team so far this year. And so, uh, yeah, it's all looking well, but everybody's in first place on yeah. opening day of the, of the season, right? Most definitely. And, and again, a little mini tirade as opposed to the big tirade I had last week. Please support the team in any way, shape, or form you can. Do not take the organization for granted and, and what it does for the community. If you're able to buy tickets, even if you're not a hockey fan, give them to somebody you know who is. It's always appreciated. So, uh, looking forward to that. Not looking forward to the snow that will be on the ground during hockey season, mm -hmm. but looking forward to the season proper. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the winter we get snow. But anyway, it's uh, my wife and I are definitely not snowbirds. We don't leave leave for the winter, but we've learned how to cope with the winter pretty well. So, I guess we'll just do another one. Yeah. Now, once again, thank you very much for taking a little bit of your time right here on the Story Behind the Stories. We barely scratched the surface of what's in this week's edition of the paper. We've got the family barbecue that occurred at uh, Arts Forward in there. We've got Manitoba Ye Beef Roundup. Uh, we talk about that. We have several letters of the editor about Ken Waddell's recent editorials, and they seem to agree in terms of, it's a nice change of pace from people disagreeing with you, Ken. Uh, yeah, I got some people agreeing with me now. I'm on a roll. All right. And so much more that you can check out. Helen's uh, Kitchen as well, huge, our regular features. That's why you need to pick up a physical copy of the paper. And you can find that anywhere in Nipawa or surrounding communities. Or if you can't find it, you can find an online copy at mywestman.ca. And once again, if you have any story suggestions, we always appreciate them. And you can reach out at 476-3401, the number you can reach us at, or you can do it via email at news at nipawabanner.com. We always appreciate it. Like I said, there's only so many hours in the day and so many hours in the week, and we might not be able to, and we apologize for that, but we do owe the best we can with the circumstances we have. So... Once again, great to have you here, Ken. And again, you were Johnny on the spot, which was great. Yeah, got a, got a good picture. Got a, well, they got a spot news photos, they say. 
That's right. And thank you, as always, for tuning in to NAC TV and the story behind the stories. Have another great week.